your sense of community when you're free rolling through the mountains rolling through the valley rolling through paradise with me hello everyone welcome to the show well my guest today is uh, a visual artist and probably among other things, I would say, because I see that he has a, a guitar in his hands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, time to meet Robert Takax. Welcome to the show, Robert. Thank you very much for having me, Nancy. <laughs> for sure. It's a, it is a guitar, I see, right? It is a guitar. It's my main one. My Ivan is the RG570. Got it in 1992, and it's still my workhorse. Oh, very nice. So are you going to perform? I'm sorry? Are you going to perform a song? I'll maybe jam a little bit or I just I only got up a little while ago so I'm not really warmed up so oh, but okay I figured right. why not <laughs> but you're also a visual artist right yes um I mean uh, did I did digital art for for over 20 something years and then and then last uh or not last sorry August about 2021 I kind of rediscovered painting and I kind of been dove right back down that rabbit hole I've been doing that uh non-stop for the past couple of years Oh, okay, so what medium do you use? Mainly just like acrylic on canvas. Yeah, it's the easiest, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, and it's uh, it's kind of funny when I first got into acrylics. I'm like, I didn't realize they were water soluble, <laughs> so I'm trying to use all these solvents to and my to clean my brushes, and they're not working properly. And my friend Jenny goes, "You know that's water soluble now," and I go, "Yeah, well, I do now." <laughs> so. And I've learned that this is a trick my sister found on on YouTube that. A little bit of hand soap cleans mm. the brushes really well. Oh, really? Okay. I'll yeah, have to try that. So, you know, because we, we, we waste a lot. We can't help it. We waste a lot of paint, right? It's just yeah. the way it is. But, um, and uh, this person would say it's not, not good to have it all go down your drain all the time. So, if you clean your brush off as much as you can, then try a little bit of soap, and then you've got yeah. less, right? Oh, okay. I, I, haven't, I, I haven't tried I haven't it. Tried it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good to uh, know. So, now tell me about your music. Mm hmm. Well, basically, I've been playing since I just I just turned 55 yesterday. Happy birthday. So, thank you very much. I've been playing. Oh, man. I actually picked up a guitar when I was about 15. I think it was. Mm -hmm. But even before then, I wanted to be a drummer at first. I'd be like putting pots and pans on the bed and then trying to when I was a little kid and trying to make it, you know, playing along with like Iron Maiden and all that as best I can. No kick drum, obviously. Right. But uh, yeah. And then uh, the, when, I, when I picked up a guitar. It uh, it was all downhill from there. <laughs> it's all I just wanted to be a rock star for most of my life, and doing you know practicing, doing the you know doing the band thing, and and uh, I've always kind of done my own thing. Like I didn't do I started off doing covers, but I quickly started kind of writing my own material. Yeah, right. Always so, had to kind of do my own thing. So when did you start performing, um, like on stage or in front of an audience? Oh, nineteen. Probably, oh, I was about 18 or 19, I guess. Mm -hmm. I joined a band out in Abbotsford. Um, we were called Tipper Gore. Do you remember that name? Yes. Yeah. Well, for those who are younger who might not remember, Tipper Gore was the wife of Al Gore. Right. Actually, he was the vice president, I think, at the time, wasn't he? Yes, I believe so. And Tipper Gore, uh, there was a big um, like uh, controversy over music, especially metal music, about you know satanic lyrics or how bad it was for the youth and yeah. that she wanted to put she started the pmrc the paris music resource center they wanted to like put warning labels on on albums and all this right and and um i don't know if you remember Dee snyder actually went to the congress and did a big speech him and actually john denver and uh so anyway tipper gore is the one who started all this so we mm -hmm. at the time we thought it would be a funny really ironic thing to call the band tipper gore so i love it <laughs> yeah. and our first actual gig was um have you been in vancouver pretty much most of your life i guess or no i'm from uh, back east originally oh how 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 long have you been here then i moved to uh chilliwack in uh, 1995 okay the, re the reason i ask is because back in the 80s and 90s um one of the big clubs downtown was called club soda that's where like all the bands that would come into Vancouver to record at like Little Mountain Sound with, you know, Bob okay. Rock and everything. They always hung out there. And that was like our first show. That was probably my first live show. Right. And, uh, we played with a band called Rival, who were like a, a really great local band at the time. And 
so yeah, it was about 18. It was, it was a good show. It was, it was fun. And, and um, we, we got a good reaction from the audience. It was, it was pretty well a packed house. I wasn't as nervous as I thought I would be. And um, from there, uh, after that, that was the only gig I played with them. Because they were out in Abbotsford and I lived in Burnaby. And uh, it was just uh, too much of a trek. And it just, whatever, bands fall apart. Yeah, it, it happened all the time. Yeah, and then I started putting my own stuff together, and then I had a band called Fool's Paradise, which was like more like radio rock kind of, uh, you know, ba- you know, it really influenced by the hair metal bands and everything. So, right, and uh, yeah, we so and that's the one we played around Vancouver quite a bit. A lot of clubs that aren't uh, around anymore, like um, Lunatic Fringe, which is down on like I think Broadway, and um, mm-hmm. uh, a couple other ones I can't even remember because <laughs> they're all they're all closed now, right? Right, yeah, a and, lot of um, changes, right? Yeah. yeah, and then I started getting more to industrial music, and because you know, mixing electronic with uh, you know, like Nine Inch Nails and Ministry and stuff like that. Right. And um, the next band I did was like uh, Edges of Seven, which is still my main thing. Which we haven't played live since twenty fourteen, but we get still have stuff on the go. So that's nice. uh, and yeah, I played quite a few live shows with them. So do you do you perform metal music? Like what, what is your genre or do you have different ones? The best way I can describe what Edges does was imagine Trent Reznor arm wrestling James Hetfield with Rob Zombie's referee. <laughs> That's the best way I could describe what we, you know, our well, stuff. There you go, folks. <laughs> and if anybody wants to listen, just look Edges of Seven up on, on uh, Spotify. And it's the word seven, it's not the digit. So, okay. Yeah, and they can they can check out what we do. Or right. What we do. Okay. So currently, now, uh, what exactly are you doing these days? Ah, oh, well, basically, I haven't like said the the band thing. We were ready to record a bunch of new songs back. In, actually, we did start recording them in twenty nineteen, just before COVID hit, and that, of course, threw a monkey wrench in in everything. Right. And um, since then, when during the lockdowns and everything, I had a lot of time, so I just spent so much time practicing and kind of like getting back into guitar because I was like kind of uh, I haven't played for a long time I was doing mostly rhythm stuff mm-hmm. and um yeah over the last few years I made more progress between 2019 and now than I have in my previous 30 something years of playing it was mm-hmm. it was so much and I still want to like we're, we're I was t- talking to my drummer and my uh bass player the other day and we still want to finish these these songs and I still want to do videos for them and everything so yeah. It's still going to happen eventually. We just got to kind of get some money together. And you can hear my backup vocalist in the background there, right? So Yes, I hear it. <laughs> he wants attention, so. Is it a male or a female? It's a male. Yeah, his name's Beethoven. Pardon? Pardon? His name's Beethoven. <laughs> Another appropriate name. Exactly. And every day he comes and he plays. He's, he's like, when I'm practicing, he comes and sits on my shoulder or on my knee because he's always fascinated with the guitar. He's coming like plucking on the strings and stuff. So, so for people who haven't seen it, because I saw it just before uh, we started to re- record, what kind of bird is it? He's a cockatiel. Uh, is they small? Are they all small like that? They're, they're small. Yeah. They're like the smaller cousins of a cockatoo. You know, the big white ones that have that yeah. big crest. Yeah. So, yeah. And he just flew back over there. So he'll probably fly over onto my shoulder or onto my head sometime <laughs> at some point. Very good. Yeah. You know, just thinking about post-COVID uh, or the worst, I mean, I know it's still around, but yeah, after the worst of it, um, I think people were really eager to have entertainment, to be mm. able to go out, listen to music. And, you know, so it got more popular for a lot of people, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, and we were just desperate to get, because it's it, like 2019 was good for concerts. I went to a whole, I saw so many good bands. It was kind of weird how, it, as far as like that year, I think I saw more shows than I have any previous year. And then of course COVID happens and there's no, no concerts. And after the lockdowns and ended and, and live shows started coming back, the first one I went to was Slipknot, which was amazing because I'm a huge Slipknot fan. Mm-hmm. And of course I get COVID at the show. Oh but no! It oh, wasn't too bad though, you know. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking to myself, you know what? Totally worth it. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as you didn't get it too bad, and, you exactly. know, some people, you know, I got. I don't know if you're a Slipknot fan at all, but the in the song "Spin It Out," they have the audience get down. And he says, "Get down on your knees." And can I curse on this show? Show and pardon? Can I curse on this show? Or I don't know what you said there. Oh, can I curse on this? Like. Hey, listen, I don't censor anybody. Okay, good. No, the reason I say that is because during this, this song, Spit It Out, they have the audience get down on their, you know, get down on the ground. 
And there's a line in the song afterwards where he says, when I say jump the fuck up, what are you going to do? And then the whole audience at once jumps. The, and so at my age, it's more like stand the fuck up, but it was still fun to do, right? So. I, I never heard of them. It's not that I'm not a fan. It's just I never heard of them, you know? Oh, yeah. Well, if you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't forget them if you saw them, like okay. nine guys with masks on. And they've been around since, the uh, I guess, the early 90s. I mean, some of you can kind of, or, or late 90s, probably. I was like, uh, first time I saw them was, I think, Ozfest in 1998, I think, out at UBC. Mm. So Right. See, my head is filled music-wise in the 60s. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I love 70s stuff. I grew I, I was a toddler. I was a toddler in the 70s, so I grew up on all that KTEL stuff. Remember yeah. that? Yes, the yeah. Digest of music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but it was all like, you know, like I remember Casey and the Sunshine Band and and uh, ABBA and uh, yeah. C.W. McCall. Remember that song "Convoy"? It's pretty, the pretty well the first one of the first rap songs. It was done right. by a white dude in a cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> I want to cover it. Actually, I actually love that song. That would be fun. Yeah. So you got to get your voice down deep to do it properly. <laughs> uh, do you have any gigs coming up? No, nothing. I mean, we had no real live shows. I've just been doing like art shows, like art exhibits since I, uh, since like last November, because I'm trying to get my, I've been mostly doing digital, like digitizing my, my physical paintings, like to do NFTs. I don't know if you're, if you're honest, it's, it's a new technology and a lot of people don't understand it yet, but some people have talked to me about it, but I, I really is a little bit find it difficult to wrap my head around it. It does. It's still it's a learning process, you know. Mm -hmm. It's more yeah. of a technology than, than just like pictures and all that, because the, the whole idea can be applied to concert tickets or real estate or anything that needs to be um, okay. um like identified as like the original cod that you can't copy because it's got like a code attached to it. Oh, okay. But but anyway, I digress. The uh I figured after doing the NFT thing, which I'm still doing, is that I wanted to get, I need to get my art out there and start doing some physical exhibits. So that's what I've been doing. No, November, I did one. Um, I did a couple uh, in I got December and May. And, um, you know, had a good, good, a good turnout. It's more about, you know, getting the art out there and getting yeah. people to know my, and then there's going to be another one coming uh, probably in September, which is going to be like about three or four artists doing a big exhibit. It's going to be down. I think it's going to be one of the ballrooms at the uh, Pan Pacific. So, oh, very nice. That's yeah. a, how do you get your art there in, into? Uh... Uh, yeah, it's a friend of mine who puts these uh, events on. So he has, he knows all. It's like the art gallery. In the, it's actually in the Pan Pacific as well called the Charlie Rosso Art Gallery. And I've done two exhibits there. Right. And, uh, it's a small one, but they have like Picasso's and 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 um mm -hmm. and all kind of others. Uh, oh, man, I'm, I'm totally what's what's Dali, you know, Salvador Dali stuff like his, his stuff. So you yeah. know, it's kind of interesting seeing my work alongside, you know, alongside yeah, some sure. of these other guys. So I used to I used to volunteer at our at the uh, O'Connor Museum here in Chilliwack, and I always tell people like. Seeing a photo of it on Facebook or wherever is not the same. Like if you can possibly get out there, exactly, yeah. See it, like you know, this far from you or however close you want to be, it gives mm. it a totally different feel, right? Absolutely. It's like I even notice that when I'm working on a piece, I'll take a picture of it, and then you look at the picture, and you're, it's it's kind of like you're looking at it from a distance, and you see things you never even noticed. Yeah, <laughs> I, that looks like this, or that looks like that, and yeah, that's an. It's I'm still discovering that, and it's still kind of because when I get stuck on a painting or something like that. I'm just kind of sitting there staring at it <laughs> and I'll take a picture of it and look at it from, okay, Hey, that's kind of cool. That gives me something else. I see something else in there. And, right. And that's where I, that's where a lot of the ideas come from. Yeah. My sister and I were like, we're, she's 78 and I'm 75 and we just started painting a few years ago. And it's like, what a strange thing it is. You know, we'll do a piece, like I'll do a piece and I think, Oh, that's so cool. I love the way this looks. You think I can do anything like it again? Like, mm -hmm. no. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the idea. Everything is, each one is unique. And yeah. uh, my thing is, I just like painting bizarre and really weird imagery because I grew up, um, when I was a kid, I, I wanted to be a special makeup effects artist. I was really into like sci-fi and horror. And, I mean, I still am, but, right. and, and, and like animation from like the 60s, 70s and 80s and all mm -hmm. that. And um, like, you know, this, you know, the Beatles Yellow Submarine movie? Yeah. yeah. You know, just, just how uh, bizarre a lot of the imagery was in that. Yeah, and uh, there's another animated film, a French animated film called Fantastic Planet. Have you heard of that one? No. That's uh, uh, '73, I think it came out, and originally in French, but um, it was a sci-fi, it was a science fiction animated thing. Again, a lot of just weird, bizarre, surrealistic imagery in that, mm -hmm. and I just gravitated toward that stuff when I was a kid, and I think that's in wow. my adulthood. 
I yeah. love the bazaar. I love. Oh yeah, it. it's it's like I can't even really describe. People say it's abstract or post-expressionism or cubism. I just don't even know what all those labels are. Here's the here's here's my my little coworker here on my. Uh, what's his name? Ben's Beethoven. Beethoven. That's right. Yeah. You said that. See how bad my memory is. So he wants uh, he wants attention now. So that's why he's. Hello, uh, Beethoven. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> he'll start. Yeah, he'll probably start getting. Of course, he'll probably <laughs> drop something on me too, like he always does. But so, just uh, just like a, as a little aside, how long do they live? Um, in the wild, like about fifteen years, but usually in captivity, up to twenty five, apparently. And, okay. and he's about fifteen right now. So. Oh wow! Yeah, so hopefully I've got another good ten years with him because. Yeah. Like, uh, he's he's like a puppy with wings. He's, he's sometimes worse than a kid. <laughs> yeah. It's all part of enjoying your year in the life. Exactly, right? yeah. Now, I see behind you, you have an, a couple of other guitars. I got like about 14 or something like that altogether. Why? Did, no, listen, I'm just going to, I don't mean this to you personally, but I see this so often when I interview musicians, whatever it is, the instruments they have, they have, mm-hmm. usually their walls are covered with different yeah, yeah. Musical instruments. Like, what is that? It's all well, basically because every guitar feels different. Okay. There's there's, there's there's different different neck length, scale lengths, different thicknesses to the neck, body weight, body type, body shape, mm-hmm. tones, pickups, um, and and just also it just comes down to just personal preference and how they they look cool. I'm a big fan of um, like solid colors or sparkles, like like '70s style sparkles. Right. You know, okay. I've got my my I got an Ivan as our uh, Paul Stanley from Kiss, his signature model. And it's silver sparkle. It's called the Ice Man. Right. And uh, of course, this is like basically the kind of the, the signature kind of strat uh, uh, body style. Most people know uh, that yeah. most people know. Mm-hmm. And this is the I, I know, my main Ibanez. I've got a couple of seven strings. I've got uh, three Vs because B, I got two uh, two Jackson King Vs and one LTD V as well. And they're just because they look cool. They're so metal, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> Now, do you prefer uh, electric or acoustic guitar? Oh, electric mainly, yeah. I have one acoustic. I just, I, I do it because I'm, I'm kind of just, when I'm actually learning different songs just to, um, just to jam to and do, uh, if you want to play it at, 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 like a, at a party or something like that, you know, mm. something with the guitar out and something, playing us something other than o, uh, Oasis Wonderwall, right? Which I don't even know. That's like a the meme, you know, oh, here's Wonderwall. <laughs> you know stuff like Kenny. I, I love playing like the Gambler by Kenny Kenny Rogers and and uh, the Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald by Gordon Lightfoot. Love that song. It's it's long though, but and uh, some Beatles that. stuff and Oasis Lila and whatever and some stuff like that. So yeah, but I'm mainly an le- electric player. Very nice. Yeah, mm-hmm. very good. Just I have to say this. I'm sorry, but I just have to say that as a guitar, mm-hmm. and I have lots of sisters and brothers. We all yeah. are a little different. <laughs> so <good>. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just had to throw that in there, you know, because it's fun. Um, so do you want to, are you uh, warm up enough that you can perform a little short? Oh, I can play a few little, uh... can you hear that? Yes. Nothing too crazy, but I just, I just I just got out. The fingers aren't loosened up, but yeah, for sure. Now, if somebody wanted to get a hold of you to hire you or you know book your band, what, mm-hmm. what's the best way? Uh, Edgesofseven.com, and there's contact uh, information there, or my art website, which is just robertthackexart.com. Okay. And uh, or in or the easiest way is on Twitter or Instagram. My handle is Rocker Gandalf. But nice all, and simple. Yeah. All one word, you know, and there's no big meaning toward it. I'm just because I'm a metal guy and I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan, so I just put them together. <laughs> well, very good. Well, we're gonna end it there. Mm-hmm. Uh, just stay on cons, uh, on camera. So uh, to the honest, yes, you've been listening to I gotta read his name all the time. You'll be ris- listening to Robert Takax, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and he lives in uh are you in Burnaby? I'm in Burnaby, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Burnaby, BC, and he's available for hire. So if you're looking for a band or may, uh, do you do solo as well? I'm working on that. That's something I, I actually just bought a laptop uh, a few months ago. So that's something I'm going to be working on. So okay. I'm always, I'm always open to possibilities. <laughs> okay, good, <laughs> good. And thank you for watching everybody. I hope you uh, like and share and uh, subscribe. Take care everyone and peace out. Peace out. A sense of community till the wax a place to be. A sense of community where you're free. Rolling through the mountains, rolling through the valley, rolling through paradise with me. It's multicultural, you're sure to see it all. Chilliwax, a place to be, you'll see. Come party in the park, go dancing after dark. Chilliwax, a place to be, you'll see.